Welcome back to the chat. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. Today I am gonna get back to work on my 86 Fox Body Mustang and do something that is long overdue. I am going to attempt to replace the inner tie rod end. I watched some videos and they made it look pretty easy, but I'm sure I'm gonna make it look pretty hard. Now, here's the part I'm replacing. Doesn't look like much, uh, but I'm sure I'll be making some mistakes along the way. Chris is gonna help me out as needed, right? Oh yeah. But I wanna do the bulk of it myself because that's how I learn best. So if you wanna see the right way to do it in a quick and easy tutorial, I would recommend you watch someone else. If you wanna see some mistakes that you'll probably make along the way, stay tuned. Chris has simultaneously got two projects going. He's working on this 85 uh, square body Chevy and he's got this 67 Mustang on top that he's gonna be delivering to somebody for undisclosed reasons. How are you doing under here? Uh, not so great. Brakes, <laughs> rusty brakes, rusty trucks. Never fun. That's what happens when you buy a rust bucket. I just wanna get on the road and deliver this, but we need some brakes. Cool. And he's got a video on both of these. You should check them out. NNKH, I'll put a link in the description. Chris told me to demonstrate why I need an inner tie rod replacement to shake the wheel. And I don't exactly know what I'm looking at, but maybe if I look at the other, other side and compare to this side, I'll see. Cause you guys know I'm not a mechanic, but I'm learning very slowly. So I feel a lot of play in this wheel. Yeah, I'm assuming it's not supposed to be like that. I'm gonna go check the other one and see the difference. Here's the passenger side wheel. Oh, there's like, there's no movement there. Big difference. Why is it moving? Yeah, you're just moving the other side. No play. If the video I watched was correct, here's the part I'm replacing from here over under Das Boot. Uh, inner tie rod end, and I believe this is the outer tie rod end. But I have to take the whole thing off to replace just this piece. And why not replace the whole thing? I asked Chris and he said, why replace it if you don't need to? Another thing that's happening today that I forgot to mention is the solar eclipse. I remember many years back we had one and it wasn't really that memorable. I just remember being outside with my homemade sunglasses squinting at the sun. So I don't know what's going to happen today, but I am looking forward to it. First thing the guy did in the video was take off the tire. Actually, before I take the tire off, I just want to show you a quick underneath view of the play in the inner tie rod end and why it needs to be replaced. I also just noticed we have some droplets on the ground. I believe that's antifreeze. I'm going to have to get a second opinion on what is leaking because maybe there's more maintenance to do than I thought. Well, there always is. First thing you do, spray this down. This should have already been sprayed. Crack this nut loose. Bend this down, get your cotter pin out using diagonal cutters to pull it out from that side. Zip this nut off, hit the top of that with a hammer. Pop, it's gonna take a good hit. You might wanna hit the side a little bit too, but pop, it'll pop down. Draw a little line here with a marker and make a mark here and then count how many turns this comes off. I spray a little lube here to remove this with using needle nose pliers, pull that little spring clip off. Uh, spray a little lube on that too, but you're gonna loosen that hose clamp. And then there's a little crossover tube here too. That should just slide right out. This is just a breather tube. You should be able to pop this boot right off of there. And then look, since you have lube here, there's a ridge here, so it might not want to slide at first, but if this is lubricated, it should pop over that ridge. And then you will have the boot off and you will have the bad part exposed and then you can work on taking the inner tie rod end off. So that's the proper procedure. It's getting dark, but I think it's just the clouds. <laughs> it's not the eclipse, it's the clouds, right? Such a bummer. It was beautiful all day. Well. I don't know if we're going to see much in the way of the eclipse, but I'm sure the news has got it covered, so I'll insert a clip if there's anything worth seeing. 
Hey, um, I'm going to run to the parts store. If it starts raining, can you just put all my tools away for me? Yeah, no problem. Now, the first thing I was told to do by the videos I watched and my in-house mechanic was to spray some penetrating lube liberally. I might be too liberal there. I get out. I think that's good. No. Got my 22 millimeter. Chris told me to crack this one loose first. Yeah. Oh! Got it. Got it. Take out this cotter pen. Yeah, Oh yeah, I see it, yeah. What do we got? Yeah, you can see it, man. Come on, come on, babe. Come, 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 come. I'm coming. You see a little, it's 90% covered? You don't even know, see it in the camera. Yeah, the clouds actually helped to see it. It's huge. It's because now we're going to get the shadow again. Hi. Yeah, I see it. Oh, I tell you, it was an amazing thing. I'll never forget it. You think you're going to see it better with that, Chris? Well, yeah, you can, when it does pop out, you can actually yeah, look. There it is. Yeah, you can see it better with this. Oh, that's neat. The solar eclipse of the heart. With the playoffs kicking off, it's time to bring the hoops action to the palm of your hand with my partners at DraftKings Sportsbook. Right now, all new customers who bet just $5 on anything will receive $200 in bonus bets instantly. So what are you waiting for? Download the DraftKings app now and sign up using my promo code, SUJINT. The crown is yours. That's right. New customers can bet just $5 on anything and receive $200 in bonus bets instantly. Oh, and DraftKings has something for returning customers as well. Score a no sweat NBA bet. If sports betting is not yet available in your state, don't worry. You can still join in on all the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy and have the shot to win cash prizes. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use my promo code SUJIN and bet just $5 on any wager to get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Again, that's promo code SUJIN. Only a DraftKings Sportsbook. And now let's get back to the video. Where were we? Cotter pin. Spin it like a can of tuna. Like the 
end of the toothpaste tube. And we get it out. Next instructions were to zip off this bolt. I have a 19 millimeter socket on here. Um, I think it's right. It seems like it fits. Let's go ahead and do that. Daddy, Teddy, Lefty, Lucy. Chris told me to just give her a good whack and she should pop out. Eye protection. You're a good waxy daisy. She's really on there. <sighs> this again is one of the things that looks much easier in the videos. I mean, I just don't want to smack it too hard. I don't know if you can. I don't want to break it. Here we go. Once that nut is cracked loose and you have this off, just draw a little line here with a marker or make a mark, make a mark here, and then count how many turns this comes off. Now time for counting turns. How many turns it takes to get to the center of the, oh, no. How many turns it takes to get the outer tie rod end off? Because you wanna put it back on the same way you took it off or else your alignment will be really messed up. I believe you're supposed to get an alignment anyway, but you wanna kind of put it back on the same way you took it off from what I understand. Chris also recommend that I use a marker, so I'll do that too. The one guy had like 47 turns when he took his outer tie rod end off. I'm hoping it's a lot less than that. I mean, this isn't really going so well. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just moving dirt around. Grease and dirt. Hi, Turbo. Are you posing? You love that Vogue, don't you? On to plan B. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> I'm gonna go get a Sharpie. Plan C. I could just clean it off. And that would work just fine too. Hmm. I'm just gonna skip that part. Why it no turn? Why is it not turning? It's gonna be a long day, isn't it? Why is it not turning? Hey, let's get a wrench on it. What? I already did that. Like. Is that not loose, yeah? It is. I need to loosen it more. Why do you think it's not turning? I don't know. The whole shaft thing. Yeah, it's funny because I saw this problem the other day and I knew that uh, you were going to run into some difficulty. But do you want to help or you want to figure it out yourself? Should I take the boot off now? Well, see, if you look under here, you see those really rusted threads? Yeah. Those are going to be very hard to get past this. Most cars, this is encapsulated, but sometimes these seize to this. And that's what you're dealing with right now, it's seized. Your options are torch it, you know, get it hot, try to get it off, clean these first, lubricate those, um, or go get a new tie rod in. Outer tie rod in. 
these are the kinds of complications that you run into. The outer has to come off. All right, now let's take a quick break for some cuteness overload. Do the thing. You have to do it on <laughs> What were you just doing over here? Gotcha. Caught you with your ball. Drop it, drop it, drop it, drop it, drop it. It looks like it's not gonna be as simple as just counting turns. I got uh, some rust to deal with here, so I'm gonna spray it down and figure out what to do next. Hopefully I can find a way to get it off. Just replace it, probably the easiest way. The other thing you can do is drop it back in that bed and then and then try turning the shaft. Same situation here. You understand what you're doing over there? Hey, did you take my gun? Yeah, I, I believe you have my stapler. He yeah. I need that. With my swivel on it. Can you bring that back? From here. Can I say, yeah, it is so slow. Yeah, so slow. <laughs> Gus, are you going to let him talk to me like that? <laughs> Change of plans. I'm going to take the whole assembly off as one piece, take it over to the bench, and try and get it unseized and worst case scenario, I'll just go buy an outer tie rod end, but see if I can use the old part. If not, no big deal. Why don't you just get an outer tie rod end? If this was an emergency, I'd have to use the old part. So I'm gonna try. Sure you're not just trying to save some money over there? Maybe that too. <laughs> This stuff really gets cruddy under here, huh? Yeah. Especially if you're like me, you spray rust uh, proofing stuff on all the time. It's like, how do you even know what you're looking at under all this grease and goop? You're like a car doctor. You just know what you're looking at, huh? No, you just figure it out. You make mistakes. I mean, it's the only way to do it. I think. One of the biggest parts about working on cars is just being okay with making mistakes. That's probably, yeah. I learned yeah. that early on. I mean, what do they say? If you're gonna be dumb, you better be smart. Tough. What? Tough. Yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> you're gonna cut that, right? No. If you're gonna be dumb, you better be smart. <laughs> here when I pulled the boot down. Oh. What do you think of that? Coolant? Yeah, it's like the green antifreeze stuff. Go on. Went through Chris's tools and I found this behemoth. I think this will do the trick to get it off. Actually, he does. <laughs> no! <laughs> <That's perfect. laughs> no, I need it! You guys think he's kidding, but he's actually not. He just took it right out of my hand. <laughs> 
what? What are you doing? Bend in this bent piece bag. Perfect. Look at that. Nice leverage. Back to what? <laughs> Come on. Here you go. Thank you, sir. on its own. Uh, what? What? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Okay. <laughs> you know what this reminds me of? Like, um, you remember Home Alone with the Wet Bandits? All this goo on my hands and on the part. Yeah. What was that? Nothing. All right. Well, Chris did not tell me this yet. Doesn't mean he won't. But in the videos that I watched, most of them removed and cleaned this vent. So I'm going to take it off and clean it. Correction. I think it was the sticky bandits. We're no longer the wet bandits, we're the sticky bandits! If there was any question before as to if I needed a new inner tie rod end, here's a new one. See? And here's the old one. <laughs> Look at it! It's like ready to fall off! There's no comparison. New. Old. Okay, now I'm gonna give it my best effort to separate the inner tie rod from the outer tie rod. But if I can't do that, head it to the parts store. What is my plan? My plan is I don't have one yet. Let's do that. I have to be careful not to tear Das boot. And I have to count the turns. Can I do it with brute strength? Probably not. Too much. Just go up all the tools. It kind of fell off in between 48 and 49. Yeah, it's fine. What? Now 
this is the part I am replacing, but I do need to save the dust boot. And probably even this little clamp. So I'm gonna take the dust boot off and give it a good cleaning. like a whole musical instrument right there. Maybe I'll save it. Gus, I got it off all by myself. What do you think? Gus, I got it off all by myself. Give me the ball, boy. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. <laughs> you have to come for it. <laughs> I would rub the grease off these threads and then uh, use some brake clean, clean them up. Put some red Loctite or blue Loctite, it's fine too, whatever, on these threads and thread it on all the way down. Snug it down pretty hard with a wrench on here or whatever you got. <clears throat> Once it's snugged all the way down, hopefully you'll still be able to access these and they won't be tucked behind and you can tighten these down too. These, I would put a dab of blue Loctite on those threads too, and those just kind of get recessed into this little little groove here as like a, a secondary, it seems. And then you will put your boot back on. You know, take the nut off, put the boot on, put the clamps on, and then you will put anti-seize or grease on this, uh, and then you will thread your or you will thread this nut on, however far you think you need to go, and then start threading your outer tie rod end onto here the appropriate amount of turns and then remember the tie rod went in from the bottom here you'll want to actually get, take some brake clean and make sure this hole is not like lubricated that shouldn't be greasy like that that's a taper fit uh, so you'll insert the lower tie rod end into this hole and then this nut that you're going to be reusing there's a specific torque for that so look it up online so you're going to torque it with the torque wrench and then you're going to put your cotter pin back in yeah i kind of work as i go so hopefully i covered everything but yeah i would I, again i would put loctite on these threads some people would probably just throw it right back over the grease and you know call it a day yeah this one's nice and tight it's good Time to start putting things back together. I cleaned out my dust boot, my vent. I'm gonna clean up some of the threads. Make sure I don't put Loctite where lube goes and lube where Loctite goes, but I feel like we're in the home stretch. Step one for reassembly is to thread on my new inner tie rod end. I'm gonna put a little bit of Loctite on the threads up there. And this is a different style than some of the ones I saw on YouTube videos. Um, some of them had a little pin here that you hammer in, but this one uh, I'm going to screw in. Loctite. I think that's tight enough. One more for good measure. Oh. Ah. Can't get it any tighter than that. Let me try anyway. How do I know if I put it on tight enough? It's good. You sure? Yeah, it's totally fine. Yeah. You said lube, right? Stop.
Putting back on the dust boot and vent. First, remove this nut and slide her over. One thing I'm not really sure of, and I could look back on the video, but my hands are all greasy. There's a little notch on this side of the vent and there is not one on that side. So I'm just gonna guess because there's nothing leading me in one direction or the other as to which side goes on which side. So there we go. Why do I always end up with one glove on? back down. Slide our clamp back over. There we go. Replace our nut. Oh, wait. Oh, time for some lube. And Chris suggested I do this because you guys saw how rusty the inner tie rod end got. This is a wrist workout. It's probably far enough. Here we go. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, forty. To move my nut. Don't forget to count, Jen. Forty. 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, like 48 and a half, 40, 49. Doesn't really look like it's gonna wanna fit. Does this thing move? I forget. Oh yeah. looked up the torque specs on this top castle nut here and it said between 35 and 50 foot pounds so hopefully that's right because I don't have a manual don't have a deep enough socket. How do I know if I over tightened it? I think I over tightened it. So I'm going to back it off a little bit just to see. Back to the torque wrench. There it is. Now we're good. 
Last but not least, time for a new cotter pin. Let's see what we got here. Question is, are all cotter pins created equal? I don't know. That looks similar to the one I pulled out. And bend the cotter pin up, I guess. I don't, I. Yeah, I guess. It doesn't have to be a work of art, does it? Looks all right to me. Let's get the inspector out here, see what he thinks. No inspector yet. He asked me if I tightened this jam nut and I said, nope. So let's do this and then he'll come check. All right, that feels pretty darn tight. Do not want to overdo it but it's snug as a bug. You got this torqued, jam nut tight. Yes, yes. Both the clamps tight. Yes, this and yes. I saw you tighten down. You got those two little hex tight, right? Yes, I do. So yeah, good to go. You could shoot that with some grease if you want. And otherwise, run her home. So it's a... It's a pass! It's a hard pass. Thank you, teach. Coming in. Everybody watch out. This is normal, right? I'm loosening. There we go. How do I, I guess I gotta do this on the ground. Yeah, probably. <sighs> on the ground it is. Let's bring her down. There's only one more thing to do. Take her for a test drive. And maybe get an alignment, but we're gonna take her for a test drive first.
Now as much fun as I had with my first ever manual car, all good things must come to an end eventually. She sure taught me a lot, from improving my stick shift abilities, to doing my first donuts, and even some firsts in the way of car maintenance. And for that, she'll always hold a special place in my heart. But it was time to say goodbye to the old gal. The silver lining was that she was going to a good home. Bill plans to show her some love, and he said he even intends to document it on his YouTube channel. Well, got myself a Mustang. I'll put a link in the description so you can follow along and see where the journey takes her. Until next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Have fun with her! videos fixing her up and uh, giving a little bit more love than she did, right? That's right. Look really, at that beauty. What a wonderful car. She is so fun to drive. I I'm going to miss it. We'll have to get another one.